If I wanted to sell my company in 2024, these are the five things that I would make sure I had in order. We're oftentimes asked in conversations we're having every day, hey, I'd really like to think about selling my business within the next six to 12 months. What do you think the best way to go about that is? What things should I have ready? What things should I have prepared? In order to make that a seamless, painless, yet very effective process when I ultimately decide to sell the company. So these are the five things. Starting with number one, have your financials in order. They don't need to be audited. They don't even need to be formally reviewed. They can be internal. We do like to see an outside CPA preparing them or at least blessing them on a yearly basis. But notwithstanding, have the financials looking clean. Have it notated within the financials what items are maybe personal, maybe non-recurring. It doesn't need to be a crystallized analysis, but the more some of these things can be highlighted as it comes into a firm like ours as we're looking to go to market, the better things are. Have three to five years of historicals. Five years is even better unless things have materially changed where the out two years, if you will, are less relevant. And then have the current year actuals and projected for the balance of the year, and then two years of future years projected as well. Again, to the extent that perhaps that second projected year is less certain or there's things that are unknown that can materially change it one way or the other, it's worth noting, but that's kind of the time frame we like to have. So have them clean, have some notation relative to what are non-recurring or personal expenses that are in the income statements, that are in the financials, three to five years historical, current year, actual plus perspective, and two years of projections. The next concept, as we've alluded to in older videos, is the organizational chart. Have a very clear understanding of what your people do, how they are cross-trained, and how there are no single points of failure from a people perspective. Be able to clearly lay that out in a framework. We'll put a picture here, an example org chart. The idea is to be able to lay out what the different people within the company do and what their respective areas of expertise are. The third thing you want to have is the processes of the company well roadmapped. And what we mean by roadmap is we think of processes within a company as three things. Sales, origination, sourcing, right? How do you get business? Fulfillment or execution, how is the service provided? How is the product made? but the actual doing or delivering of the product, service, or offering. And lastly is the operations. How do you hire people? How do you fire people? How are people paid, invoices, legal? What is the administrative thing? And that can be a series of vendors. It can be internal people, a mixture of both. But the idea from a process road mapping is to be able to explain each of these fairly clearly so that processes are very machine-like, dependable, reliable, and durable. The fourth thing is have an understanding of the service product or offering, right? So taking one step back again, we always say a business is comprised of people, process, and product. We already discussed process, we already discussed people, and so now product. What are the services or offerings that your company provides, whether it's a thing, whether it's a service, or otherwise, or some combination? What are the different tiers? What are the different variables? Is it able to be defined as we sell this many types of candy bars, and depending on the situation, is it something more nuanced? But be able to clearly define what the company does and who it does it for. You try to be everything to everybody and you're nothing to no one, right? You wanna be able to define who you serve and what does that entail? And then also to have some vision towards the future as well. In the future, we could enhance the product, service, or offering by doing A, B, and C. The last thing, if I were looking to sell my business in 2024, I'd want to know what I was going to do. So I say, what am I doing now? What do I want to be doing? And what is the delegation strategy that helps me get from A to B? If I wanted to hand over the company to someone, what things would I have to teach them? What things would they have to learn? What things would I still need to give input on on a post-transaction basis? Because obviously, when you're breaking down a sale of a business, it's dollars and structures and what happens to employees, but a big component of that dialogue is going to be the transition period for ownership. The more clearly you can define how you taper out of the company, how you hand over the brain trust and the reins of the company to someone else and how efficient and seamless that can be, the better you're going to be able to negotiate that transition period. And so to recap the thoughts for today, if I were selling my business in 2024 and I wanted to have everything in order before I hire an advisory firm to go do so, I would first have the financials in order. I have an org chart that clearly showed what everybody was doing and what their capabilities were. I'd understand the process and have roadmaps for each of the sales and origination, fulfillment and execution, and operations of the business. I want to have a product or service breakdown and understanding of what are the different tiers, levels, flavors, and effectively how many variations of the service or offering are there and what are some of the projected plans for it. And lastly, 
having that delegation roadmap of, okay, I'm the owner, this is what I'm doing, this is what I would not like to be doing it, or this is what I would like to do, or this is what I'm doing, and this is the path to delegating what I'm doing to new ownership. And so none of this has to be elaborate, none of this has to be complex. There's a good amount of analysis and granularity that a firm like ours would help work through prior to obviously getting an opportunity into the market. But having these things in order can get you into the market a lot quicker, can make the process more efficient, and also clue you in as to what some of the things that prospective acquirers are going to be looking for in a lot of the dialogues. And so this can be 10 to 20 pages of stuff put together, but it can be an effective catalyst to the beginning of the process in particular. So that's the thought for today. If I were going to sell my company in 2024, these are the five things I want to have in order. Hope the week continues to go well for everyone. Keep pushing forward. God bless. See you next time.